Welcome to the Fusion Children's Ministry Podcast. My name is Brent Colby. And I'm Stephen Salmon, just like the fish. Today we are talking about assessing special events, otherwise titled, What the Halloween? What the Halloween? Today's episode, as always, is not brought to you by The Bear Facts. Answers to questions your parents hope you never ask. Pretty weird. Don't know why they call it the bear facts since we're wanting them to actually be modest. Yeah, it's a little scandalous, Josh. I don't know. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Josh, kind of dropped the ball on that. But hey, you know what? If you got questions you hope your kids never ask, watch this video and then you'll know those questions ahead of time. All right, let's get going. Something awesome. Well, this week, Something Awesome is brought to you by the GoPro company. You're familiar oh. with GoPro? Yes. Little cameras you can splash around, carry in the mud, quite popular all over the place. But they're just now releasing their very own drone, and you can oh. check it out, the GoPro Karma drone. Uh, you know, it's not uncommon to fit GoPros on a drone. This one, right, the company right. made it, super simple. And one of the cool things is it fits in a little backpack. So you can literally wow. carry the whole kit around with you and uh, wherever you're at for all your droning needs, you'll have yeah. a drone right yeah. there ready to go. Get some really cool shots with the drone for different stuff. Yeah, it has a, a little gimbal thing so you can carry a little handheld camera around nice, too, nice. all in the same pack. So that's pretty cool. A really fun game idea for children's ministry too, not to get off topic, but right. is to buy two really cheap drones okay. and race them around <laughs> your, your, your room. You fly them above yeah. the kids' heads. Uh -huh. Yeah, you just hope that they don't run into each other and you have this big crash, you know, explosion, <laughs> something in the kids' butt. <laughs> It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I used a drone as a sermon illustration at camp for a couple years. Oh, yeah. It's the same drone. And uh, the bit was it would go up in the air, and right when I felt like I, I had control, I would just throttle it straight up in the air, and it would usually fall harmlessly to the ground. Right, yeah. But I totally nailed like a little second, third grade girl one year. Awesome. And uh, I tried to play it off. She was really scared. But I did one of those like, oh, that's so awesome. And I think it worked at the end. Yeah. Um, her parents haven't called yet. So if that's your daughter, I apologize. If it, you're watching this video, <laughs> the statute of limitations and that stuff is long ago. It was like 10 years ago. She's basically in college now. Perfect. All right. <laughs> All right. So what the Halloween? Assessing events. Have you ever had this conversation, uh, Pastor Steven? Yes. Are we doing a Halloween event? Yeah. Have you ever considered doing a harvest party? Harvest festival? Yes, because you know Halloween is the devil's holiday and we shouldn't be doing a Halloween event. We should be doing a heart and we shouldn't do it on the 31st. We should do it on like the 30th the or 20th. When no one is going to show up. It would be horrible for people to think that we were outside on the same night as Halloween, least we be endorsing such fiendish behavior. On I know. The Have you ever had that conversation before? Uh, I did. So at the last at the last church I worked at, believe it or not, mega church, 17,000 people, they did this and I, I never understood it. Really? They just didn't do anything on Halloween? No. Yeah, they did a harvest festival, but they had this big camp and so they get people out, but they only opened it to people of the church. Okay. Yeah, and so no, no new people. So that was your church before, but yeah. your church now. Do you guys do Com something on Halloween? Completely different. So on <laughs> Halloween here, uh, now in the Pacific Northwest, uh, we have... Uh, I think it's like 24 different stations around the community that are free stations where you can get hot chocolate, okay. apple cider, um, donuts, different snacks. And then at six of them, we have uh, these exhibits where kids can go and take their picture with like Kylo Ren. Not that he's a good guy or anything, but you know, he's their Star Wars okay. characters, uh, Pirates wow. of the Caribbean, okay. uh, Neverland, just, uh, just cool things. And then they go. And um, staff, uh, pastors are at it, so um, we're getting to meet tons of people in the community. And for this community in particular, buses will come and shuttle people up here because the houses are so close to each other right, around here. Right. I mean, it's literally like right on top of each other. Okay. And so we, you get you get 14,000 people coming through this neighborhood on Halloween night. That's amazing. And why wouldn't you want to reach? People right. who don't know that Jesus loves them more than anything in the entire universe are trying to get candy. Not that giving candy to strangers and trying to tell them about Jesus is weird, but you know, it works. Hey, that's all right. Yeah. I've been at churches too where it was it had to be a harvest party. It couldn't be anything Halloween. And I remember just sitting there thinking for the first time, like, why why are we doing anything? Right? And I feel like 
the people in the church had kind of lost the focus of why we were trying to do something at all. And so the idea of doing a Halloween thing just didn't compute. Yeah. And I think for me, one of the important things as we do, whether they're a Halloween event, an Easter event, a Christmas event, is that we know why we're doing them and that we are intentional about assessing the special events when they're done. Because otherwise you're just keeping busy. I mean, nobody's looking for more stuff to do. If you have no metrics attached to what you're doing, there's really, you're just doing something to do it. Right. So you guys host a Halloween event. How do you know at the end of that weekend if that was a success or not? Um, well, we, we try to see a, a bump in numbers and then we also give out these touch cards. Okay. And we say, hey, bring this back on Sunday or Saturday now because we've got a Saturday night gathering. Bring this back and turn this in and you'll be put into a raffle to win like something. But it's something where they have to, they have to bring it back. So they have to come back so there's an action on their part. So then we know, hey, this person got this. They don't usually come here. They've turned it in. Now we can follow up with them and we got their information. Okay, so that would be one of your goals is yeah, to get people to come back. Yeah, and so many, you know, so many of those people would come back. Okay, and uh, so, so you have some goals, you do your event. Afterwards, do you guys talk about it or do you just let it be? No, every event that we do, there's a post event kind of just rundown of, hey, how did this go? What did we feel? What was the feeling in the room? What did the people say? Yeah. Um, did it work? What didn't work? Because, you know, you just get, you kind of get put into, you know, a rut almost if you just kind of do the same thing over and over and over again and never, you know, yeah. you know, you, you, you know, you never, they say if you plateau, you're already dying. And so you never okay. want to do that. No. Have you ever had an event where you assess it afterwards and you're like, nope, we got to kill this thing. It's done. Yes. What was it? What was the event? Um, or was it too soon? No. So we had this, uh, we had this game night that we, <laughs> so bad. And it, it wasn't, <laughs> it was, it was, it was a lot of different faults. I'm sure that you can run a good game night kind of thing. But this just was not, it was not good. People like maybe 60 people showed up and I think we did it. We were fighting football games and all this other stuff. And that's, uh, you know, when the church is fighting against other things that people have going on that they put a lot of stock into, especially with their kids, it's just not good. There's, you know, um, but we, we, we played these super lame games and looking back on it now, <laughs> they were awful what was the worst what was the worst just help me help me it was like the it was like this like 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 pachinko type thing where you're like yeah. it, it had been like something that people when they didn't have if, if you didn't have anything to play you <laughs> like, found rocks before trying to bounce them into like a, a can that someone had eaten out of that day to like get points for something and we're just going back like <laughs> we have ipads now these kids are like what what are you doing i have an xbox one i could be playing right now and you're asking me to like throw these things on the ground and bounce it into this like canned food can that someone ate from last week. I'm imagining some like old grandma leading a game of like kick the can. Yeah, no, it's things like that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Or like a stick and we got a hoop and they're like trying to hit the hoop kind of thing. And it's like, no, it's the retro. Old, no, it's lame. The old stick it's hoop. Lame. Yeah, no, it's lame. No. Well, we definitely think it's important, you know, when you assess events, you got to know what's a win. You got to be able to track it somehow. And I think you guys nailed it. When it's over, you have to assess the event. Was this a win? Was it not? What yeah. was our goal? Did we hit our goal? And you have to be willing to ask the question, is this still the right thing to do? Yeah, because, oh man, uh, really, really great pastor, Craig Rochelle. Don't know if you know him. Yeah. Yeah. Life Church, Life Church on TV. He, he said something that completely changed the way I did events. Hold on, before you said, I think your mic fell down your t-shirt. Oh. Pull it up, hold it up to your mouth like a, like a tiny broadcaster. Craig Rochelle. Okay, yes. Brent. <laughs> said something really great. <laughs> yeah. He said, what are we doing right now that's good, that's keeping us from doing the events that are great? Oh, that's good. And so are we doing 12 good events a year instead of doing five great events a year. How can we reach the most people by doing five great ones and not killing ourselves over 12 good ones? And that really changed. We went from doing, you know, sometimes killing ourselves with Saturday, Sunday, first Wednesday, and then doing an event a month in children's ministry to saying, no, you know what? Let's just capitalize on five or six really big events that we can do for the year and make those outstanding and leave the kids wanting more and wanting to come back for on Sundays and doing different stuff. That way we're not burning out volunteers. Right. We're not burning out ourselves. Yeah. And we can have really good post like times saying, hey, did this work? Rather than, hey, we can't even talk about this event because the next one's uh, right. in three right. weeks. So. 
All right, so if you guys assess your events, and I hope you do, I would love to see some of the questions you ask yourself, you ask your team in the comments below. Yeah. Kind of give us a peek into your process. How do you evaluate whether or not what you did was any good? What's the win? That's it from... Uh, from... Wait, hold on, Whoa. not quite it. Oh, 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 I have a sorry, game sorry. prepared for you, Steven, oh. because it is Halloween coming up very soon. Oh, I want to play right. a quick game with you okay. called uh, Appropriate or Not. Okay. Okay. Bible themed Halloween costumes. Now, uh, okay. um, we'll have to, to uh, we'll share the picture on screen right Bible afterwards. Bible man, one of the costumes. I cannot give it away. Let okay. me open it up okay. here in just a second. He's coming um, back, you know. Bible man? Yeah. Well, we got yeah. A new series. Costumes one through five. Okay, here we go. Why don't you just ask Siri? Okay, yeah. <clears throat> okay Bible costume number one. Okay. Stephen, appropriate or not? Very appropriate. You can't see any ankles and you can barely see any wrists. Now, so who that would... guy, that shepherd man. <laughs> no good. ankles or wrists. Do you think, what, what, is it a shepherd? That's who that is there? He looks like a shepherd or someone who just passed their ordination ceremony. <laughs> okay, picture number two. Okay. Appropriate or not, Bible themed Halloween costume? <laughs> uh. I would say no, well, just because he's a magi. He's going yeah, to celebrate the he, birth of the king. You know, not I. I, I love Peter Dinklage. Okay. But he does maybe like look as not a you know we're we're looking at not a full size man there. He All right. Like uh, like Zacchaeus. <laughs> maybe it is Zacchaeus on Zacchaeus a camel. Zacchaeus on a camel. Yeah. It's either a giant Zacchaeus or a very small camel. One yeah. of the, maybe it's a baby camel. Maybe no, it's a normal uh, size Zacchaeus on a baby camel. No, that... no camels were hurt in the filming of this production. <laughs> Number three, appropriate or not, Bible themed Halloween costume. Right. Uh, uh, is she okay? Uh, I'm going I with. That, uh, I think the costume is okay. I think that actress or that model probably isn't okay. Yeah, she's just, <laughs> just kind of got that look that says, hey, uh, you know, and she's an Egyptian, so. Yeah, she's like, hey, Joseph. Yeah, exactly. Not exactly. all right. Not all right, yeah. Question number four, appropriate right. or not, Bible-themed Halloween costumes? Right. Old classic? Uh, definitely not appropriate. <laughs> that's Adam and Eve. How yeah, could it be any more? I can't believe you're showing me that's that right Genesis. Now. That's from Genesis 1-1. This, one one. this is the beginning. Yeah, you know. Before sit, well, the snake is in the scene there. That's probably Yeah, why not. would we want to promote Satan? But the apple's not bit. Is the apple bit? Doesn't matter. Yeah, the apple. Okay. Temptation and the enemy. Finally, in that costume. question number five, okay. appropriate or not appropriate Bible-themed Halloween costume. Anything's better than that. Russell Crowe in Noah. Definitely appropriate. Well, that's it for us. Let us know if you think these were appropriate or not. Subscribe, comment below, whatever you do, Love do to it. Love hear your thoughts. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. See ya.